Hello people, um, welcome back to our videos on our YouTube channel, No Black Set Designer. As always, um, it is your host and uh, your instructor, Abdurrahim Babatunde Kukola from Nigeria. So you're all welcome back to this, our exclusive video. Today, I want to explain how to calculate the performance of the efficiency performance of a regenerative a regenerative steam power plant process so we are going to simulate the process and we are going to calculate the efficiency of the process and compare with certain methods of um, like how the flu package calculation affects the efficiency just the major thing about this video today is just calculating the efficiency of the process thermal efficiency of the process so i before i proceed deeper into the process because i've already made the process so and um i would like to just explain what i have done for us so that you'll be able to catch up with me so on explanation of our steam power plant process steam power plant is a is a heat engine process or uh, process that converts uh, thermal heat energy into electrical work so it is like a combination in a circle like a continuous circulative process where or uh, a working fluid sometimes water sometimes air you know, some mostly water for steam power plant you understand so uh it's used as uh it's ab used to absorb energy from a hot reservoir which is which is uh in most time a boiler a uh, nuclear power plant you know, that is uh, operated at a, a, a at a very high temperature so it's going to absorb heat from the steam power plant to the water is going to absorb it and form a steam to drive a steam turbine you understand a steam a steam turbine then it is condensed to condensed with the liquid space then it is pumped back to the circle so and um the major thing about it is the energy that is uh absorbing the or in the in the boiler is lower than the energy that is actually dissipated to the environment and uh, some of the energy is used to is converted to work and you have some work that has to be sent to it this uh, approach is is uh, is important it is uh, it's required because of the constraints from the thermodynamic laws instant so that's why we have to have we cannot supply change all the heat energy into work so but uh, our goal in the engineering work is just to design a system that is able to convert maximum amount of heat energy from the that is absorbed in the hot reservoir to the work because work energy is actually having more but the both of them they're actually energy you understand sort of energy but uh, you can use it for electricity is so uh, it is of a higher value compared to the heat energy that you can just get it from anywhere so we use the heat energy to to, to get the work power then and uh, and this is the temperature entropy uh plot of the most efficient uh, heat engine for the conversion of heat energy into work electrical work so we call this the circle cannot circle so it is just like a reversible process that that is uh that is not that the rate of uh, disorderness in the system is not changing although this is an imaginary system it's not a realistic system so uh, and uh, because of the the kind some kind of limitation in designing a, a boiler and uh you if you have a steam power plant that is at uh saturated steam and you are even sending you are getting liquid 
a lot of liquid in the in the turbine is going to be there will be flooding it to be that is you cannot design this kind of system in in real life so and uh, so we have another one that is very close to this uh idea perfect cycle that is having the highest efficiency in the heat engine you understand so we call the system rank and cycle which is the one that i, I have here so this is the rank and, rank and cycle so for right hand circuit, it differs from the candle circuit based on some adjustments. For example, instead of having uh, the steam to be super, uh, saturated steam, you can superheat the steam to higher temperature that is going to be at high temperature compared to its uh, saturated temperature. So it will be more work or uh, more work supply, uh, produced from the turbine and the turbine exhaust is going to be just uh, as some liquid or it, 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 it there will be much liquid fraction in the turbine exhaust and uh, you have a pump too that doesn't pump a mixture of liquid and gas that is multi-phase pump it, it, the the subcooling from the condenser will reach saturated temperature of the working fluid so you can easily pump it to higher, temp higher pressure before you send it to to the boiler for its absorption from state one to state two so and from state two to state three is the uh turbine system for the work you understand so and uh these are not it is a rank and cycle and um for a rank and cycle it follows this approach and uh the rank and cycle you can see this is also asentropic or uh, process for the expansion and the compression is asymptotropic but in the in real life you cannot have asymptotic expansion for a turbine or so it does some kind of slants some kind of uh, lost in the process so you understand so some kind of exactly lost in the process so and uh, you can add the cycle like that so our main work is actually a regenerative cycle which is a modified form of a ranking cycle that makes the efficiency of the cycle to be higher that is its efficiency in producing work from each energy to be higher so instead of actually instead of having just a turbine like we have in this uh, simple steam power plant cycle for a regenerative cycle you can extract the steam at different stages in the turbine and we re re eat the steam and um we eat the steam as you can see over here with a preheater or even the boiler itself before you you then you use it to preheat the the feed you understand or you can send it to an, a lower stage in the turbine in order to generate more power you understand so that's uh it we make the process more efficient as you can see from the TS diagram over here for for the for for a regenerative rank and cycle you can see it's more complex complex to compare to the simple one as you can see we have uh, multiple lines here we this is the supply testing and uh, this is the expansion from the turbine downward to another state from state one to state two you have the the uh heat exchanger over here and that to and the the condenser to so cool states then it joins the net section then we also have another it's not all the all the steam that will be used in the turbine is this is just the one that will be used in the turbine in the fourth stage then it is all this all straight line the isentropic expansion so then we have another some part to be condensed or used for preheating the uh, the the steam the 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 water the condensed water in the circulation before it enters the boiler and um, the mini part is sent to another con or a co uh, turbine stage for expansion expansion stage in the top in the turbine so that's another stage three then stage three is reheated in the boiler to stage four 
then the expansion continues through the stages from five six seven eight and nine so that's the last stage then you have complete you can see each stage is also coming back from to the next stage mixed with the next stage mixed with the next stage till we we are reaching um the condenser which is at the bottom so you can see our boiler pressure is very high and uh, the condenser pressure is very low 0 0.075 bar so in order to actually increase the efficiency of the system the higher the boiler pressure the more the efficiency so most times the boiler is to operate at very high pressure while the condenser is to operate at the very low pressure so then the, we have multiple two pumps here one pump in the i'll show you in the flow sheets so we have two pumps here one pump here and the other one at the bottom in order to increase the pressure of the liquid that is condensed liquid for the circulation so and uh, you have everything in terms of one kg of steam production that is the specific uh property of the system the specific entropy of the system so because most time when you want to calculate the efficiency of a power plant you calculate a specific eff efficiency so which you so you can scale up and scale down the the flow rate of the of the power plants of the steam production with you understand? so it's based on the operating temperature the pressure of the system and uh, the configuration of the system and the how you 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 specify the fractions that is going to be in each of the stages of the turbine so that's another thing so we can go to the flow sheet you will see the process more clearly in the flow sheet so in the flow sheet you have the makeup water we have the aeration tank where you remove air from the working fuel because air inside the working fuel we affect the performance of the process so so this is the aerated water this is the makeup water that you send to the system if there is any loss in the circulation of water in the system we have the pressure and the temperature of the water you can see it's just pure water that is entering as a makeup stream so this is the second pump for to increase the pressure of the working fluid from 500 to 1500 kilopascal which is the boiler temperature so you have some proiter you have two proiter here to create all these all these lines that you are seeing they are creating line in order to inc uh, vaporize it and increase uh the steam you understand so it it is uh it is to to exchange the heat of this for the the working fruit you understand so and um you have it in order to increase the efficiency of the process and integrate some of the heat that is coming from the extracted stream from the turbine for the feed to reduce the energy required in the boiler so you have you are able to increase the temperature from 154 to 254.1 degrees celsius i think it's just 100 or something 50 degrees celsius increase in uh in each of the heat exchanger so and um then you have it in the boiler so this is a boiler like this so it, you they have a steam drum on the top of the boiler to separate the the vaporized steam the separated steam from the the vaporized those to separate the saturated steam from from the circulation so the the boiler is a fire heater which use natural gas as uh it's a combustion for fuel then um uh, so so you have the few components here and the air so from the parameters you have the efficiency of the boiler 60 ssr is 40 and uh, the fuel component is is not given here so then in the connection you this is the stream that is coming from the boiler you, you know, from the feed from from the heat exchanger train then it goes into this line into the steam drum then it's circulated back to another because it's a multiple loop like to another uh, section of the heat exchanger 
So then, oh, then we have the and uh, the twenty four to twenty five. Then for the another session, we have the radiant session for the super super eating. And for the session, you can I think I use this paper to to do the steam power plant is for a tip or uh, a plant in Nigeria that we call the egg beam uh, power plant in Lagos State in Ekorodu, Lagos State, Nigeria. So we we have the superheated section, the reheater, superheater section for the radiant zone. We have the economizer zone and uh, the what they call this. Um, and the convective zone so and uh, although this is a steady state so it is really not important in when do you say the modeling so i did everything as a box like uh energy balance box you understand so it, the zone is not actually incorporated into this uh, analysis so everything is just the energy balance of the system of the boiler system or model so then you have the uh the super system coming here then there is another stream too that is extracted. You know, I, too, I, I said uh, for the process, there are some re reheating of the steam for the second stage, uh, uh, for the second uh, turbine. So we, we have like three turbines in the system. We have the high pressure turbine that is operated at the very high pressure of the, of the 150 bar, I guess. Let me check the value. I think it's 150 bar. Okay, 150 bar. Why the we have the low pressure and the intermediate pressure turbine that is operated at uh, a lower pressure range of for uh, so this is the low pressure. This is operated as 20 bar. Then you have the intermediate pressure as 5 bar, 3 bar, 0.75 of the condenser. So those are the or uh, intermediate pressure is at 20 bar. While we are at the low power, the low pressure is at five bar, three bar. You understand? So those are the so the intermediate pressure, in, in, intermediate pressure and the low pressure turbine are incorporated into this is into this model. While the air pressure is only here, you understand? And uh, to separate the system for multi stage, this is the method to use for multi stage uh, turbine in Aspen ICs. You can use a splitter or you can use a turbine for each of the stage. You understand? So I I want to do it like this. So that's why I just use a splitter for the energy balance. You understand? So it is uh, very efficient this way. Although there are met there are software method. I'm even thinking of a method now by using the fourth stage, then dividing the stream, then going to the second stage, then you add the power together. You understand? So that's another another method of doing it. Or you separate the feed. You have one for the four a turbine for each stage. You understand you separate like for example there is a fraction there is a fraction like you know this one minus m1 that is going to stage three why m1 is going back to so the m1 fraction is separated in the feed so you have a turbine for the four stage for the 150 bar then another turbine for it so we'll be having multiple turbines so i just want two turbines to make it to make it but it's sufficient like these two you understand so we have uh a well i think the first method will be more robust compared to this so and uh, we have uh the stage two that is coming at five thousand kilopascal which is uh 50 bar and this one is coming at 20 bar so this is reheated and goes to the uh intermediate pressure turbine at uh it's coming at uh 250 and it's with there to 500 celsius and in the time pressure turbine we have the athletes that is coming for another pre-eating in the aerator uh, to remove air from the stream and the other eater so we have one stage seven for this pre-eating and stage uh, eight for this pre-eating and uh for the for the nine, that is the 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 condensate that we are getting for I won't call it the condensate, the the moist steam that we are getting from the outlet of the turbine, you are mixing it with the recycled like 
from here that you have all these recycled it's mixed back to these working fuel to this uh steam trap so the work of steam trap is just to or uh, to compress the steam together and remove the condensates because when you remove the condensate from the process it will reduce the amount of heat needed for 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 the boiler you understand so you can easily add the makeup water there so some of the condensate that are from as a result of the heat exchange from the heat preheaters you can remove them then you have a pure quality steam that you can use for it is or uh, it's it uh for its integration again that's the meaning so you have this one too so so the remaining steam is mixed with the remaining condensate that you have here that you have uh this moist steam then they are condensed in the condenser so these are condenser operated at um uh, what's the temperature 7.5 0. 0. 0, uh, 0. 0.075 bar which is a uh, 7.5 kilopascal then you have cooling water as our cooling agent for the condenser then this is the first pump to increase the pressure from 7.5 kilopascal to 500 kilopascal so then you have the heater then the circuits continue to the aerator then go back to the turbine and the makeup so that's the main work of the of the process so we have this drip just to pump some of the condensing in the stream trap to, to the process like we have it in this uh in this plant so this is the drip pump so and um and that's the main process so our work today is to calculate the efficiency the thermal efficiency of this process so before we calculate the thermal efficiency of the process in order to get the total power produced of the process because the, the efficiency actually depend on the on the power produced and uh, from the Rankine cycle and uh, the quantity of heat that is absorbed in the boiler. So we need to get the specific power production from the process and the specific heat absorbed in the boiler. We have to calculate the specific efficiency of the process. Then we can scale it up with different power rating and get our power rating for the plant and try to adjust the uh the model in order to get a better method for a meta a, a better thermodynamic package for the efficiency calculation so i'm going to use uh although to calculate total power i link the turbine together there is a way to do it in aspen analysis that you link all the turbine together to calculate the total power supply in the in the turbine so we are getting it 8.9 megawatts power from the two turbine at this current state so you can see the same thing in the the two turbines are linked together so if you are working on multiple turbine stage two you can link them together so you get the total power that you have from the process so everything is now exported to a spreadsheet to calculate our efficiency and the power production so this uh is these are the uh, specific entropy, mass entropy of the steam of interest in order to calculate the uh, specific uh, its uh, specific efficiency of the of the process. So we and these are these the m fraction that is the steam fraction because we we are using all this m. For example, you have the one kg. You taking that the specific steam production rate from the boiler is one kg. So what? fashion is going to the uh, high pressure turbine low pressure turbine or intermediate pressure turbine so these are the fractions that we are using currently in our state so we can use this to optimize our specific heat and stuff like that you understand so those are the also parameter of the process so i'm going to start by calculating the this is the power production rate this is the boiler duty and this is the condenser duty the negative means or uh, it is a uh, hot duty that is the heat is released to the uh to the surroundings so it's thermodynamic convention so we have the boiler or the pump power so we calculate the um the the net power producing the in the plant so for the net power producing the plant is is uh, using this formula that is c1 minus the pump power so we'll be able to calculate the power net power producing the formula 
so we can calculate the efficiency like that that will not be the specific efficiency efficiency is majorly power produced rather by uh, energy absorbed from the system and uh, that's what at the present condition the amount of steam rate that you are getting that's the efficiency or well, we must calculate the specific one in order to optimize the process uh explicitly you understand so and uh for the for that we let's start with the current power so this is the efficiency for the process using c1 which is the gross power production so we can do use this one to for the using c6 we are going to use 6 6 now for you can see the efficiency reduce so i'm going to change this one to percent so because the efficiency is in percentage so so this one is for the uh for the power production so we have to do for the specific enthalpy we we or the specific efficiency we use the power from the we use the steam enthalpy of the system because the so uh, the calculation of the power produced is going to be based on the efficiency of this pump and uh, the enthalpy of the steam at high pressure temperature the enthalpy is going to be very high high superheating temperature the uh, uh, enthalpy is going to be very high and uh, if the pressure gradient is low, then the enthalpy of the content of the moist steam that is coming, exhaust steam that is coming will be very low. So the difference in the enthalpy that will be used to calculate the power produced, specific power produced from the turbine, you understand? So, and uh, it's going to be based on the mass flow rate of the steam, you understand? So it's going to be power produced per kilogram of mass produced uh, in the steam that is supplied from the top from the boiler. So we can use all these stream. This is from stream one, the mass entropy of stream one, as you can see, imported from stream one, two, three, four, six, seven, till eighteen, nineteen, twenty-three. 23 is the stream that is going to the boiler and um, let me show you so this is stream 23 the stream that is going to the boiler and stream 1 is the stream that is um, stream 1 is the stream that is uh, stream 1 is the stream that is entering the steam turbine that is entering the the turbine you understand that is entering the steam turbine that is leaving the boiler then we have another stream to stream three for reheating and stream four you understand then the, we have the six seven six seven eight and nine that is leaving then we have for this pump ten eleven for the pump after the condenser the condensate pump then for the second pump the feed pump we have 18 and 19 so that's why we're having all those entropy of interest in in smaller mass entropy of interest in the stream so and these are their fraction with respect to the flow rate of with respect to the flow rate of steam that we have here you understand so when you check the mass flow rate of this divided by mass flow rate of this you are going to get the fraction of of this this stream 3 for is 0 0.8 so this one is 0 0.2 so we use it for the specific entropy calculation okay so for the entropy of the fourth stage which is uh the high pressure turbine like i said we are going to be using fraction b1 is the total fraction of the feed that is coming to the stage then we are going to be using fraction of the specific stream which is b2 the outlet that is going then the b2 is also the outlet then we have the specific entropy so the difference between the entropy 
that is going that is out entropy going out my entropy going in from the energy balance will give you the the power produced you understand just like doing power energy balance in the high pressure turbine then for the other stream two this is for the fraction of the of the fourth stage in the turbine because the high pressure turbine is having two stages the stages of five the stages of uh, of uh, let me let me show you is having two stages we are having 50 bar and 20 bar stage you understand so we are going to calculate the the entropy difference of the two stages by using b2 the fraction of the of the four of the 50 bar stage which is b2 and the b3 which is fraction of the of the 20 bar stage so that will give you the specific power produced in the high pressure turbine which is equal to minus 470.1 kilojoule per kelvin the negative means that uh the system is doing work on the surrounding if the it's just a thermodynamic convention so you shouldn't be at a lot so okay so this is for the intermediate pressure turbine and the low pressure turbine so for the intermediate pressure turbine we have the same convention so just diffraction you can say everyone is starting with b1 so you scale it down to the specific power because all the same are divided you understand they are fraction of the total steam that is coming from the boiler which is steam one you understand the one the steam name one so you have b1 for it so the fraction is equal to one so you have the b4 for the stream that is coming for the second time date stream turbine so that's why you have the b1 b4 for all the uh etap, entropy defense calculation to calculate the power producing each stages of the intermediate pressure turbine and the uh low pressure turbine for example the intermediate pressure turbine is having is having this one stage is having two stages no, the, this uh, high pressure turbine the intermediate pressure turbine is have, is coming like this stage four then you have one two three that's three stages then the okay is having three stages then the low pressure turbine is having two stages yes and so we are going to calculate the power produced from each of the stages of the time the pressure turbine and the low pressure turbine and the power is minus 596.7 kilojoule per, kel per kg so of the steam that we have in that is leaving the boiler so and um, and now we are going to the pumps so for the condensate pump you have b1 b4 which is the same fashion because if you check this is the condensate is from 10 11 stream 10 and 11 the same fashion that is coming to to these places from the one that comes here that is b4 b4 then stream 9 that's the fashion that is leaving for this stream 10 and 11 so you are going to have b1 b4 b11 you understand and you can see b9 to 11 they are the same thing you understand so that's the fraction of the power that is produced that is required in the condensing pump then we have the feed pump over here okay the feed pump is from b1 b13 to uh okay b12 so this is the fashion stream 18 and 19 and you can see it's the same fashion b1 the reason i'm using b1 is it's the same fashion of the steam that is coming to the you can see the value 1.665 kilomoles so that's the same mass flow rate of the steam that we have in the pump it depends on the flow rate of mass because we are calculating specific property specific efficiency of the process so that's why so we have or uh, 1.665.4 uh, e4 so we are going to calculate the power specific power produced in this pump so with respect to the kg of steam producing the boiler so we have 21.43 kilojoule per kg so then the next thing is the boiler for the boiler 
it is just considering two stream because there are two stream that is entering the boiler it is just like your a boundary your know, system energy balance we have b1 both of them is b1 b1 for the stream 23 and stream 1 you can see b1 a1 out minus in so what is coming in is stream 20 23 and this one so 4 is coming out 3 is coming in so you are able to calculate the specific its energy to absorb by the working fluid in the boiler with respect to the steam produced. So this is the fraction one. This one is B4, which is the fraction that is going to this intermediate pressure and the low pressure turbine units. So and the, the power is 2725 kg per kilojoule per Kelvin. We have to calculate the specific duty Released to the surrounding from the condenser, we just calculate the energy balance of the system because the total energy supplied to the system and energy leaving the system at steady states must be uh, the net energy must be zero. So once we sum up everything, all these all these uh, energies will be able to calculate the energy loss to the con uh, to the surrounding through the condenser. So this is the summation. We just writing putting in negative because we want the convention of the energy to be negative. The because you is energy lost to the surrounding. So that's why I just multiply everything by minus one. You understand? So that this will be energy absorbed because the energy absorbed minus or uh, when you add the energy produced in the condenser is negative. So when you add it together then it will be energy loss from the condenser. So this is uh, 168 T kilojoule per kg of energy loss in the condenser. So the next thing is to calculate the efficiency now. Or first we can add up, find the net power produced because you'll be supplying, you'll be using some form of the power for the pumps and the for the pumps, you understand the main pumps. Although there will be some other auxiliary pump in the process, but the main pump they will be consuming some energies. You understand, so you, it's not all the power that you produce in the turbine that you are using. You are sending out from the process. So we are going to calculate the net power produced in the in the system first. The net power is uh, let me put it over here. So it is just C eight C nine. You can see eight nine eight nine ten eleven you add them together so it is the net power produced in the in the system i can change the format to be mass entropy let me write it first mass entropy so that's the net power produced. So this one is a calculation the efficiency. So you divide this with the Euler duty. So that will give you the uh, the efficiency. Okay. And uh, I am putting negative sign order to remove the negative. You know, we're going to have negative efficiency. So it's basically the formula from CD11. So I'm just remove, adding the negative sign in order to remove the negative sign in front of the power produced from the convention. So you can have the efficiency to be 38.36. So I can write this one to be percent. I've already multiplied by 100 from the formula. So that's the efficiency, specific efficiency from the process. And you can see it is very close to those producing this which is this 34 this 36 you understand so what uh, this is when you multiply this with uh with uh you can calculate the power that the 88.96 megawatts by you use it to calculate the steam rate you can use it to calculate the steam rate you can use it to calculate the steam rate that is required to get 100 megawatts once you know that this is the specific power produced in the process so you use to calculate 100 megawatt. For example, to calculate to get 100 megawatt, the steam rate is going to be to get 100 megawatts. You can use this one to be equal to 
one zero that's hundred one one oh one megawatt is ten to power six kilogram kilo kilo joule per seconds. So I'm going to write ten to power six kilo joule per seconds here, and um, I will divide it by d okay minus d eleven. That will give me the steam rate in kilo joule, kilogram per seconds. So we have to get 95.67 kilogram per seconds for the steam rate kilogram per seconds for steam to get 100 100 megawatts in some so and currently our steam rate is uh again it is not in, in per seconds is per hour so you can uh this three is power five kilogram per hour to change this one to power per hour we are going to do something i'm going to uh per seconds i'm going to multiply it by 3600 so i'm going to multiply this times 3600 so you have this 3.4 so a kilogram per hour so you can name this one to be mass flow kilogram per hour so this is the steam rate for 100 megawatts this is the steam rate for 100 megawatts that is needed for 100 megawatts according to this system so for the further analysis you can do we can test the efficiency of the process how it changes and the calculations changes when we are using different thermodynamic method because the thermodynamic method is what is going to use to calculate the specific entropy and the power produced from the turbine so if you are using accurate thermodynamic method the result will be more just realistic you understand so i'm going to be using several thermodynamic method that is available in aspen ICs in order to get the influence or the effect on the process so the basis one is for the power plants the turbine the operator section why the base two is where we have the natural gas so uh, i is for the boiler section and uh, i'm not going to be changing the base two because of the pen in because of the hydrocarbons that are there but for the basis one i'm going to be changing it to a more suitable method for steam so we have to a suitable thermodynamic method for steam fuel package, which is uh the MBS steam and the and the ASTM steam. So I'm going to start with the ASTM steam, and uh, I'm going to remove the air component. Although it, it is actually redundant in the system, but uh, because we are just trying to use it to model maybe any maybe there if there is any air impurity that is going to affect the process. If you want to do the study of air impurities in the system, how it affects the efficiency, how it can be mitigated, how it can be removed from the system. So I am going to just remove the components. It's not going to affect my process. So I've changed the flow package to ASTM steam, and uh, I can go to the simulation environment and calculate my flow sheet again and see the efficiency that is calculated. So the flow sheet is in the is in old mode so i've activated it so it is now working again so the flow sheet is working again so you can go to the spreadsheet and see so this is now 84 and you can see the power is even the efficiency for the terms of power is even very large 40 39.98 and the steam rate has reduced to get to 100 megawatts so you can see the power produced is now next to 0.58 and uh the duty as the boiler duty has reduced so that's the effect of using different several thermodynamic method although uh i'm going to change it to another one now and see the last one and see the effect so although the flu package actually suggested in the in method assistance is uh 
ASTM Steam, Penguin Scene. If there is any mixture and um, and the MBS Steam with hydrocarbon. So we can have a power system. You can see Penguin Scene or SRK base. So for water only, you can use this MBS or ASTM Steam. So I'm going to change it to MBS and see the effects and so you can just be changing the flu package and for the MBS team I'm going to see the effect. I don't think I changed it. Huh? It's not even affecting the so I think I just changed it now. So, so the calculation is done and um, you can see it's just similar. This the power is very high now. This is also 40, 39. That's also reduced. So that's the effect of the of the system. And also we can also see the the flow sheet like the CO2 emission from the system and monitored it with our two in Aspen tools in Aspen is this like such as this so that's the that this will be the end of this video so thank you for your time I hope you are able to understand the concept of what we are trying to do today trying to understand how to calculate the specific efficiency of power plants, how to optimize it, how to analyze the system and how to adjust it. So maybe in the next video, we can work on optimizing the process with uh, the fractions, the splitting fraction of the heat exchanger and uh, of the turbine stages and uh, modeling a more robust uh, power plant system and uh, so on. So uh, thank you for your time and uh, I really appreciate so uh, watch out to our next uh, for our next video on this channel and uh, comment on our videos like if you have any question on what i've just done you understand i'll be glad to answer those questions and you can also send me a message on my whatsapp number on my email address on my page you understand or number at gmail.com you understand i'm available i'll answer your question so thank you for your time okay See you next time.